Today, I'm going on a style journey with podcaster, influencer and brand ambassador, Sophie Habu. Hello and welcome, Sophie. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. I'm delighted to have you here. You're a super busy girl right now. I mean, (laughs) not one, but two podcasts. Um, One called Newlyweds. Yeah. With your husband, Jamie Lang. Yes. Double whammy. How's that? How's that working with your husband? It's got easier when it was nearly words, which I is pre wedding. By the way, nearly words to newly words. It was, I mean, really original. <laughs> it was, it was a struggle then with the lead up to the wedding. I found with the stress of it and sharing all of it, it's, it feels like a breeze compared to that now. I really, we've sort of got into the groove of it. But so, what's the next chapter going to be? You've gone nearly words, mm. newly words. I don't know, nearly divorced. <laughs> no, hopefully <laughs> not. Um, I don't know. Well, you know, hopefully make, build a family and all of those sorts of things. I, and I, have I, you I, decided what you'd call it with the I don't know. bun in the oven? No, what do, what do we think? Nearly, nearly, newly pregnant. Blooming. Blooming, there you go. Love it. Names. Blooming words. Blooming words, amazing. <laughs> I don't know. I need to think about that one. <laughs> um, now, you famously were on Made in Chelsea. Yes. Did you meet Jamie? I there? met Jamie on Made in Chelsea. Now, he, for many years, was like, we mustn't say that. You have to pretend that we knew each other before. And I'm like, okay. And then I, as time's gone on, I've just forgotten that we he didn't want me to say that. So we did meet on the show. And we weren't actually that, I don't think we were friends for about a year. And then we went on an away trip, filmed in Croatia and South Africa. And we became really close over those periods of time and became really good friends. And then it slowly... Really good friends, (laughs) she says. Yes. But how was the experience uh, going from private individual to basically living in front of the camera? I was, I must have been 23 when I started and I think Made in Chelsea back in the day when it first started was, it it was a lot bigger. It was kind of the only reality show out or maybe the first and, and they were really sort of thrown into the limelight. When I joined, it was a bit of a slow burner in the sense that yes, you were, things were public but I wasn't sort of walking down the street and people were like, oh my God, it's Sophia Vu. I don't think anyone knew who I was. So it was a real slow burner. I don't, it definitely had its ups and its downs. And I think it took some time to navigate putting all of that out there. Yeah, because that is young. You mm. know, I often think about it with people very much in the public eye when they're very young, whether they're in music or art or, or whatever. It's a lot to take on. Yeah, I think looking back on it now, and I mean, I'm 29 now, looking back on it, it was more so the lifestyle. I think there was no structure. And obviously with filming the show, your lives are really in the producer's hands. Like they're telling you where you're turning up. They're telling you, you can do this. You can go to this christening or this person's wedding, or you can't because you're contracted to film. I think that took a while to get used to. And then when you come out of that, it's almost that's where you sort of struggle a bit because I was used to sort of being in this bubble. And then when I left the show, I was like, oh, well, what do I do now? So that was sort of, because all my sort of 20s were doing the show, really. And how did you swivel? Um, I, well, I think my first year coming off the show, I was like, what do I do now? I had a lot of free time. <laughs> I was like... And also that the adrenaline of having that drama every day and you're sort of living in this world of it. It's exciting, but it's also quite toxic. It's, there's a lot of jeopardy, isn't it? That- totally. And you're sort of bred to like revel in the toxicity and the cheating and the drama and the bitching. And, and then when it goes and everything's peaceful, I was suddenly like, oh, I'm quite bored. But actually it was sort of learning to be okay with it's not boredom this is just peacefulness and happiness like life life did you did you find yourself consciously processing that yeah I I I felt uncomfortable I think I was a bit like what I didn't know my place 
I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't know which route my career was going to go. You know, suddenly you've got, in this industry, you kind of have to, what I found, like you, there's a lot of people doing the same thing and it's hard to sort of know what you're going to do. And there's a lot of uncertainty. And what was your first um, sort of move? What was the f- the first opportunity that came up after Made in Chelsea? Um, I guess sort of it was just sort of coasting and then we very off the back of nothing. I mean, Jamie's obviously been doing podcasts for a long time. He did private parts, I don't know, like 10 years or something crazy. And I think we we got engaged and then he very sporadically was like, let's just do a podcast, see how it is. And I didn't think anything of it. I also did not think anyone would listen to me I say all the wrong things I get think my mouth muddled up all the time so I was like this really isn't gonna be my thing and then it, it people somehow liked it and so that's sort of where it's gone from there and it's been something to do and it's we've had lots of fun with it and I think that's kind of it's got, very into the podcasting it's very infectious I I have to say and then you've got your other podcast mm. Wednesdays yeah and actually we did do that before that was quite a slow burn and me and my friend have been doing that maybe since before lockdown or mid lockdown so 2020 um and that's with my best friend and we we honestly used to just come around to my house and we'd have a bottle of wine and just gossip and Jamie would always be in the background and he was like you guys should really record this and that's how that sort of went and that literally was the inspiration yeah and it's just us gossiping and it's great and I love it because I don't it feels like I'm just catching up with my best friend so what other exciting projects do you have up your sleeve so I've had a bit of fun this year with designing and like creating collections with, I've done it with Coast and um, I think there's about four collections out with them. And then I've recently just done a collection with USA Pro, which is a gym wear brand and designed some sort of everyday gym wear. So you can wear it when you're not actually in the gym and you're just walking around wherever you're walking around. And how did you approach that? Did you approach it in the way of what do I really want to wear? Yeah, I did sort of what I would wear and what I would like and what would be comfy, but equally what's flattering for other sizes. And obviously it's hard. I don't know, you're probably, you're definitely the expert in this, but it's hard designing things that I think would fit everybody and like suit everybody and everyone would feel comfortable in. But I sort of looked around and spoke to my friends and we tested out a couple of things and I'm, I'm happy with it. Then you're brand ambassador for a couple of other brands. Yes. And I know that you model those brands too. How do you find that process? Oh my gosh, I I honestly said to Jamie the other day, I said, I couldn't be a model. I mean, I couldn't be a model either because I'm not one. But I think that is such a hard gig. It's a real skill, actually. It's physically exhausting. Like doing the gym wear brand, like the tensing of my stomach and like trying to look like you, I think... Oh, this is going to look nice. And then they show it back to me. I'm like, no, no, no. How does it... Filter. <laughs> <laughs> it's Not that you need that. Not that you need and that. And it's like hard. I don't know. But yeah, so that that was kind of... And also, you just see yourself so differently. Something the photographer would be like, I love this. Photo. I'm like, I really don't want that photo to go anywhere. But I guess that's just insecurities and things everybody has. It's completely natural. Completely natural. But today, we're going on a style journey together. Oh, wait. So how did you decide what you were going to wear here today? Okay, disclaimer, I spoke to Will. I'm very upset with my outfit. <laughs> I was meant to be able to go home and change before coming to Amanda Wakeley's podcast. But I'm in very comfy, laid-back clothes because I newlyweds ran over my podcast and I didn't get a chance to go home. I love it. Okay. Because I, well, I always think of you as slightly as sporty, sporty like cozy. Yeah. That type of vibe. So I'm not very glam as in I really struggle with things I don't feel comfortable in. So my trousers are always quite baggy. I just wish I could wear my mum's very glamorous. A huge fan of you. She <laughs> loves you. She's very excited. And she, I always look at her, God, I just wish, but I just feel very uncomfortable in things that are really tight. But do you think you, your style evolved sort of almost away from your mother's style to create your own space? Is there any psychology in that? 
Um, I think a lot of my style has come from my mother in terms of tones. She's always been, she's never sort of, you know, fashion, it'll be bright pink. So my mum is always like very neutral, very cashmere cozy, very, very chic, but like understated. And I've never been big on colours. So I don't know whether that's after her. That's interesting. And were, were you ever big on colours even no, as a young girl? No. Never. No pink or purple face. No, I used to love everything I wanted to wear was white. I loved <laughs> How <laughs> super glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love wearing white, but I was quite OCD as a child, so I'm not sure whether that had something to do with it. Were you very aware of your parents' style growing up? I was very aware of... My mum loved clothes and very was very stylish. I remember weirdly, though, my mum used to live in flared jeans, and I used to be really embarrassed of her wearing flare jeans. She's wear them with like heeled cowboy boots, which now I'm like, she actually looks so chic and cool. But I think she didn't dress how the other mums dressed. So what era would, what decade would that so have been? So I was born in 1994 and this is when I was, before I was 11. So, it was, so late 90s, early yes. 90s. And she was quite cool and like jeans and denim and she'd wear like leather jacket and she and all the other mums sort of I don't want to say frumpy but they didn't dress like she did and I actually was really embarrassed I used to be like please stop looking so glamorous it's funny isn't it that whole school gate trauma yes her picking me up I was like please just be wearing I can't think what they were wearing but I'd be like please don't be wearing flared and how how interesting that you now look back on it and think she was probably the chicest mum at the school gate totally I know has she forgiven you I (laughs) I hope so but what is your earliest um sartorial memory the the memory that you have the first time that you put something on and it felt really good or it felt really bad and you knew you just didn't want to be in it oh my goodness that's a really interesting question okay this is really strange but I remember being the only person who would wear ballet pumps and I think they must (laughs) everyone else wore like clumpy trainers and or like comfy shoes. And I had these like really sweet leather. They were from Marbella, Old Town, I remember. And they were quite Spanishy, maybe European. And they were like ballet pumps. And I was really kind of embarrassed to wear them. And also loafers. I used to wear loafers. But I loved them. And I thought they looked really cool. But I was almost embarrassed to wear them in front of my friends. At what sort of age are we talking? Oh my God, I must have been nine. And these you bought in Spain when you were yeah. there? Yes, because we used to spend our summers in Spain, in Marbella, and I, all of the people who lived in the area we were in were from Madrid, and they had this European style, and they would wear, like, Ralph Lauren and linen, and they'd always have loafer, leather loafers, and they were just very different to how my English friends dressed. And so I would go to Spain, and I would start dressing how they dressed, and then I would come back at the end of summer and still be wearing it sort of September time for the beginning, first term of school. And I'd always feel really embarrassed and I'd want to put on like the the sketches that everyone in England wore. And were you in a school uniform at the time? Or? Yes. Yes. Uniform, yeah. But the shoes, were yeah. you allowed to wear your ballet pumps? You were allowed. And so I was wearing little leather ballet pumps. And my mum, I remember in winter, I'd wear brogues and every, no one else would. And I was sort of embarrassed, but I also was like, I don't want to wear the clocks with the Velcro strap. So I did wear them. <laughs> <laughs> was your interest in clothes more... From your years in Spain, or were you more influenced by living in London, would you say? I think when I was younger, I definitely preferred what the Spanish, that sort of clothing to what my friends in or people in England would wear. But then when I got to probably like 15, I definitely was very like, oh, that's what everyone wears in London. And it was sort of about, God, that time it was like the fedora hats and the skinny jeans. And I remember the skinny jeans were really in and the leather sort of look jeans and and the gilets. And I was wearing all of that. But so no rebellious teens, no... I didn't have any weird... My mum did keep a cap on it. My sister was more rebellious. She sort of wanted to wear... No, one thing we did do, which was awful, we would have our hair up with one strand like this. And I remember my mum would be like, 
oh, can we just, and I was so obsessed with it being scraped back off my face, and my, I was like, please don't, and then also the plucking of the eyebrows, that was, and the bodycon skirts, they, they were, I look back and I'm like, no. And how short were the bodycon? Short. 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 And how much makeup? Oh, the dream at moose. And again, I remember my mum would throw it away and I would scramble through the bin. I just, that's painful looking back and think, looking at the makeup and the concealer over my lips. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> but you rose to fame at 24? Yeah. Um, do you feel like being in the spotlight at such a young age affected your fashion choices? Um, I think maybe I wore things that I wouldn't have worn. I tried to be more fashiony, again with color. Like I'm not that. I like style, but I don't know. There's often things that are in fashion that I don't like, and they're just not for me. And I think I probably tried to wear those sort of things. And looking back on it, I'm a bit like, oh no, that didn't look right. Did the show have a stylist? Were you no? No, no makeup artist, no stylist. So you were fully self-styled. Fully self-styled. But you were thinking, I should try something. I could think I might have wanted to look a bit Chelsea, which sometimes wasn't me. <laughs> Why? Because you're more Notting Hill. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't know. I think I probably wanted to look quite raw, like at times. And it's just like not, you know, I don't know. And maybe I tried too hard the, in the first year. So what is raw in your, in your eyes? Okay, so I remember at the beginning, everyone was sort of where, like I said, the sort of gilets and the hats and the... Stuart Wiseman boots like the suede boots and like the over the knees yes and it just it didn't look right on me I, it wasn't even that I don't like it it's just that I tr went out of my way to get that to be like because I thought this must be what Chelsea people wear like this is what I should be wearing fascinating <laughs> <laughs> are you very conscious of what you wear when you're filming your podcasts no, I'm not. And I probably should be. In a word, no. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely used to wear, with, because with us as well, it's only top, you can yeah. only see the top half. And I started thinking, I was kind of getting wasted. But with Wednesdays, I actually, we try and, you know, think about, you know, I don't want to turn up in my track suits every time. And do you, are you conscious of having different looks for the two different podcasts? I would like to we film on two different days, so I try and change my outfits. <laughs> so, but so, do you have a certain look for newlyweds oh, and I a certain look saying. for yeah. Wednesdays? Maybe Wednesdays, I would definitely try and you know dress how I would dress to go out for lunch with a friend. Yeah, or and have a glass of wine. Exactly, or three, or three. Do you actually drink while you're? We did, and we stopped because we started filming at 10 a.m. And we were like, I don't think this is a good idea anymore. <laughs> Wine at 10 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> On a Monday. Oh, it's probably Yeah. Oh. Uh, um, as you evolved your style, do you think you were very aware of how what you chose would look like on film or even on your grid, for example? Um. No, I don't think I've necessarily... I think going to sort of red carpets and things like that, I definitely think, oh, would this look flattering? I've learned, like, some things just are not flattering. Any real fashion howlers? Oh, yeah, I've definitely had some. But I, I also just, like, just some... I have a really low... My chest is long. And so I just... Anything sort of boob tubey, showing too much of my chest, I just don't... It doesn't suit me. So those sorts of things, looking in a mirror, I don't see it as much as when a photo is taken. I'm always a big fan of, if in doubt, take a selfie in the mirror. Really? Okay. And then look at that picture objectively. These are the tips I need. <laughs> oh, you, you got it. So sussed. <laughs> um, as a newlywed... Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have wedding choices. Mm. Um, you had not one, but three wedding dresses. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about what drove those yeah. decisions? So, we obviously got married in London, and I wanted... We had a, a London wedding, the official wedding. So, that was, that was town hall? Yes. Yep. And that was to obviously, like, sign the... The yeah. papers and I I always knew my Spanish wedding I wanted it to be pretty traditional mm. but 
I didn't know in what sense, um, but I knew that the London wedding, I sort of wanted a bit, to have a bit more fun. I never wanted to wear a long dress for my London wedding. Mm. Um, and I don't know, I, I just found that, I can't remember, is it Vivian Westwood? <laughs> Yes, it's Vivian Westwood because I've seen pictures of it. It's her iconic dress. <laughs> so there's a story behind that. There was none in my size. I think I'm wearing a sample and right. it was a bit ripped. Like the the strip, like the the sort of stitching was all coming out because it was sample. There was none in my size, but I tried the sample on and they were trying to find me mm. another one. There wasn't. So I ended up wearing that one. And then I couldn't get it off. The zip jarred. So we actually, I slept in it, which no. the boning, I thought my ribs were going to collapse in the morning. And at 11 a.m. after trying for hours, my mum was going off now. We just had to cut it. There's that fabulous picture of you and Jamie coming out of down the steps and of the of yeah. Chelsea register office. And you're wearing sunglasses. Yes. That was a very last minute decision. Because? So they were my mum's sunglasses. Oh, how lovely. And she put them on and I didn't have mine and Jamie put his on. And I don't know, there was a lot of um, press outside. I think I just thought, oh my God, mum, can I have your sunglasses? Not even thinking would they look okay or anything. And she just took them off and gave them to me and they seemed to look oh, kind of good. Oh, but something old, something I new. Know. How lovely, because they look so cool. Sort of those golden, you know, with your Metallic. golden colours and those golden oh, glasses. Thank you, thank gosh. Yeah, very good. They weren't sort of black or they could have been... Very different. iconic, sort of paparazzi-esque shots. Did Were you sort of... Did you think about how your wedding was going to... Those wedding pictures were going to look before that moment I wanted them to sort of be black and white and vintagey and sort yeah. of like I don't know like a bit more fun than the traditional and we had Ben Wheeler who's an amazing photographer yeah. and he shot our friends the year before and hers was sort of very ethereal and in a forest and I knew that he had done London city weddings and he could get that sort of like I don't know vintagey look it, it just felt a sort of um I want to say urban glam it was I a com that. combination of real chelsea registry office but super glam and then the the timelessness of the black and white i thought was he he was, was lovely really amazing and he i think it's so just he was just great because we didn't know he was there that that and you can really see that in the pictures it's just those lovely court moments and i think that's a real skill and your you guys are just sort of wrapped up in this joyous yeah. moment so that's wedding dress number one that's wedding dress number one then number two then number two so I I'm trying to think how I did go and try on a few wedding dresses how was that process I found that really overwhelming because I liked them all and I <laughs> I, I mean a big princess you know the corset with the massive skirt I never thought would be my vibe and I was very close to getting I can't remember who it was but <laughs> terrible maybe it was Alexandra McQueen um did you go to a, a sort of bridal emporium yes. that that sold all different yeah. brands I yeah can't, the London bridal shop or whatever and the Pronovius yeah. and all of the I went and did you did your mother come too? Mum came too. Oh, how lovely. So did my sister. So we were all there and it was really special and I loved it. And Emotional? Know, emotional, yeah. I definitely, got, so I did cry with one other dress. And then what happened was I thought I was going to get that dress. I went again to try it on with my friends and they loved it. And it was all this thing. And we were like, we found the dress. And then that evening, my friend sent me a screenshot and she'd seen three other people wearing it. We were like, what do we do? Can't get married in that one. And my friend who had had Ben Wheeler and got married the year before had her dress made by Emma Beaumont, who's a wedding dress designer. Mm. And she said, Emma's like, has mentioned that you're getting married and, you know, if you want to chat to her, you can. And Emma's place is in Manchester. And so just with the busyness of planning the wedding, it took a long time for me to be able to get up to Manchester. And I was sort of holding all my bets on, I'm just going to fall in love with it and we're going to have this idea. And she was so, it made me feel so safe because I knew that I wanted 
I wanted lace, but not thin, sort of like a vintagey, creamier mm. lace. And I wanted sleeves, and I wanted it to be fitted with sort of this tail, but I also wanted it to be quite classic and mm. like not too revealing. And she just sort of was like, got it. And I, I actually only managed to go, so we fitted it once, we pinned me, and then I only managed to see it one other time. And then my second dress, which she made too, I didn't see until the night I put it on. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and did it fit you like a glove? Yes, it, it clearly fit, did. It did, but that was quite risky. I don't know what happened to me. I think what happened was I rebelled as a bride because I was so overwhelmed. I almost was like, oh no, I don't, don't want to see anything. So number three dress you put on yeah. on the day of your wedding. Yeah, and we were really up. I, I don't think we decided what we wanted to do until this, the last fitting for the main dress. We she, And again, Emma sort of took it in her own. I think she could tell I was very overwhelmed. I'm <laughs> feeling anxious hearing this story. <laughs> I'm not an organised person, so planning a wedding was like, honestly, my mind was spinning with the amount of layers to organise. Yep. Um... And I sort of last minute decided, my sister, by the way, a bit of back story, was getting married in September, so a couple of months after, and she'd always wanted the sort of Annie's Ibiza corset little short dress. And I kind of wanted that too, but I thought, you know what, she really wants that, so I've got to do something different. And I didn't want another long dress. I wanted something different. So we decided on sort of a skirt. It was going to be a bit more bohemian looking. I, can't, I really wanted to change into flats after <laughs> the big dress. I didn't. You'll be happy to know. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm in awe of people that can keep their heels on for the whole time. Unbelievable. And you it's did. Talent. I changed into like a Colt guy at Sandley Wedge, which isn't, doesn't sound very nice, but they were comfy. Yeah. So I changed out of the pointy heels. I actually wore uh, not heels that I, I, I dreaded them getting ph photographs. So Jamie's, <laughs> Jamie's not that tall. And um, with my first wedding where I, my shoes were showing, so all these Jimmy Choo heels. Which were beautiful and I, lovely limbs coming out of that Vivian Westwood oh, mini. thank you. And he, there's quite a few photos of him on the higher step. <laughs> <laughs> kissing me because we weren't the same height and he said he kept saying so you're gonna wear those heels again and then I changed into a two-piece it was a skirt and the lace underneath it was the same lace as the main wedding dress oh, and gorgeous. then in my veil she embroidered my grandparents names oh all four of them so that was special beautiful did you have a a bridal style icon Oh yeah, I kind of like Hayley Bieber's dress. So um, so she was on your on your mood board. She was, and I I, I didn't go too far from that. I must <laughs> say, I'd like to say it was all. But you know, I always did like. I don't know why I've always loved lace. And again, my sister went for a very traditional princess corset with a huge skirt, silk. So I wanted to do something very different to her. What did you wear to her wedding? I she I wore a bridesmaid dress, and it was um, gold silk hold to neck did you approve i approved i liked it yeah great if you were getting married all over again is there anything that you would change from what you did choose i think um on my sunday the pool party i was kind of like i, I had this sense of it just it's done now and i didn't wear i had a really cool beach cult guy uh, like crochet two-piece and it was quite cloudy it rained actually and I'm a cold person so I put on jeans and a green cardigan because I had nothing else and I really regret it <laughs> I really am like why did you not and I'm never gonna wear that two-piece again and like it plays on my mind a lot oh. like, why didn't I just so I would have just worn all the looks and really gone for it and yeah uh, it's your well good moment. advice though yeah to anyone listening that's yeah deciding whether they wear their green cashmere and jeans yeah or... don't do it just <laughs> keep being a bride for as long as you can <laughs> what ignited your passion for beauty I so when I was younger I had I won't say acne because it wasn't acne but to me I didn't have good skin I had loads of sort of bumps yeah. under my skin um and I don't know I, I I we tried lots of different things I don't know whether it was hormonal or whatever but since then I was so self-conscious over it and I just could never 
you think you'd solved it and the next day you'd wake up and there was something else oh. and so i got into hydrofacials actually quite young at like 16 because they what are... is a hydrofacial so a hydrofacial for anyone listening who's never had one they sort of it's a deep cleanse with a machine it's a seven step or six step machine and it sort of exfoliates it extracts it hydrates so it puts lots of hyaluronic acid back in your skin it's quite very safe and not using any serious um active creams or ingredients so you can use it you know I was 16 when I started and that sort of made me very interested in my skin and what I was putting into it and then what happened was I when I first started Made in Chelsea we did my first year we did an away trip to Sri Lanka and I got melasma which I didn't know what it was Whoa. And I was 24 and I thought I'd had a spray tan before I went and I thought they'd splattered it across my face because it was sort of, yeah. and I, we were in Sri Lanka and it obviously come out with the sun. So I, yeah. put, I was scrubbing it off. I was, what is this? I'd never had anything like that before. Yeah. And of course I didn't know what it was. So, I, and I was really bad with sun cream. So anyone listening, please wear sun cream. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And so it's been a journey since 24. I'm now 29. I, gone through loads of different things to try and get my melasma because it's pretty it never goes just to keep it at bay and that's where it's really come into play and so are you super careful with spf every, every day, day. Wear yeah. a, i wear a cap even in the winter if it's sunny and i'm walking about i'm so oh, careful. that's you just being discreet <laughs> <laughs> hiding from the press <laughs> but talking about as an influencer with over a million followers on various channels um, which is incredible, by the way. Thank you. Um, you must get showered with clothes by um, brands wanting to reach your audience. Um, how do you handle that? I think when I first got sort of into it, dipped my toe into it, I was like, this is amazing. Um, but I, I, there's only so much you want. Very lucky, firstly, I must say, I'm in a really lucky, I'm super grateful. I mean, it's so amazing that anyone would ever want to send me their clothes. Um, I think there's definitely times you've got to pick who, firstly, the ethics behind brands, whether you want to wear their clothes and whether it is your style. Do brands approach you or do you just open the door in the morning and there are just a million parcels on your doorstep? I must say, I don't actually often get gift, gifted um, clothes. I get gifted a lot of beauty products, um, which I'm not mad about. But I also, I give, my wonderful PA is often at my house boxing them up and we give them to charity because there is a lot of stuff that, like you said, I haven't asked for or agreed to and I don't know it's coming and it arrives at the door and obviously, you know, I'm not going to... So which charity would you give that to? We give it to women's refugees. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. How lovely. Um, which is really nice. But we don't often get clothes. So maybe Ooh. I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> if you had one particular brand oh. that you could be gifted by, which brand would that be? Um, this is really hard. I like Isabel Moran. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Um, fundamentally, who do you think you dress for? Do you dress for yourself, Jamie, your audience? I definitely don't dress for Jamie, but not in the sense Spoiler that... Spoiler alert, Jamie. Just, that is, I just don't think he would notice, <laughs> bless his soul. Like, I just don't... He think, he really, really honestly likes me in tracksuit bottoms. Like, he'd, he's not a very glam, fashion-y... Often when I wear clothes to a red carpet, he'll be like, oh, are you wearing that? And I'm like... Yes, please, please don't. So I definitely dress, I think I dress for myself. I mean, talking about red carpet, do you find the red carpet dressing exciting or stressful? I find it really exciting, but that is because I have a stylist. So, she, you know, I have guidance and help and she pulls really cool brands and really cool outfits and I love her and get on with her so well. And that's a stylist specifically for red carpets or for life in general? Just for rep events, yeah, not, I don't get her on the day-to-day. -day. <laughs> um, when do you feel that you really discovered your style DNA? I would say not, not far, like, not that long ago. I think, like I said to you when I first, 
I like being comfy and I think that was really hard to, I sort of and again it was the colors I always felt like I needed to be wearing what everyone else was wearing and I'm just quite a comfy everyday I would like to say understated not that the outfit I wore last night was that understated <laughs> bribing but I would like to say that that's sort of where I find myself feeling most comfortable and I'm drawn to those clothes so sort of timeless I'm, I mean on honestly you're probably like no no <laughs> no not at all but what would you reach for to feel empowered I love like a, a really smart suit two-piece um and from where which brand would you okay and every day like reasonable price I'm a massive fan of Massimo Duty beautifully cut really nice I love the trousers mm. there and mm. it fits me and it's it's not hugely expensive but it feels expensive so I love their stuff and um, money no object money no object oh my goodness this is hard it's hypothetical. Hypothetical dresses, you. Oh, <laughs> I know. No, not even. Can I just say I have to? I have to tell this story. I told my mom I was on your coming on your podcast, and she told me this story that she went to a wedding, and the dress code was for, for females Amanda Wakeley dresses. Oh my god! I, could, I said it was the most incredible wedding with this and the other, and I can even hear it. I I am so <laughs> flattered, and I've never heard that story, but that I is just really, lovely. I, was like, I have to tell you. Oh, thank you for sharing <laughs> that. Oh my god, I'd love to see the pictures from that wedding. I know. I think my mum was like to my dad. I was, she was like, it was the best excuse because she was like, I've got to get myself one now. And do you, do you remember what she wore? I don't think I was there. I think it was before my time. <laughs> or I might have been very young, but I must get a photo and show you. But how amazing! A oh, whole wedding of just do. everyone in your dress. Do you ever raid your mother's wardrobe? I definitely did. She lives in Portugal now, so it's quite. That's harder. It's hard, <laughs> but I definitely did. My God, that was a constant argument because I would just be wearing her clothes and probably not treating them without asking. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's a good mm -hmm. one. That's a good one. <laughs> If someone were to describe your style in three words, what would you want those three words to be? Oh my goodness, that's really hard without also sounding big headed. No, but that's why I say someone else describing your style. So I'm not saying to you, how would you describe your style? So in your dreams, how would you like to be described? Okay, in my dreams. In your dreams. In my dreams. <laughs> effortless. Um, chic and relaxed. Love that. In my Love dreams. That. So it everybody. wasn't that hard. It wasn't that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you've got a style icon? Do I have a style icon? I love Rosie Huntington Whiteley's style. And I also like Katie Bieber's style. It, sometimes I think it's just not what I would wear because she pulls it off so well, but I just think she always looks really amazing. But I think Rosie Huntington might be, is very effortless. Mm, very beautiful. Mm. Now, you lead a very busy life. Is your wardrobe phenomenally organized? It's not, it's really badly <laughs> I sort organized. of knew you were going to say that. <laughs> You're heading off on tour with your podcast. Yeah. How exciting. Very exciting. How are you going to plan your looks for that? This is very exciting. I'm really excited about this because I feel like I'm having a bit more fun. I want to have fun with it. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I'll have to have a think and, and depending on weather as well and comfort. And will you will you work with your stylist on that? Yes, I'll work with her. Um, mostly because I just, she's, I mean, she's amazing what she does and the, that look she pulls up. I always love, but I just get on with her really well as well. So great to get her. Good excuse. Good excuse to hang out together. Uh, do you plan your looks at the beginning of a week? If I have something big, I definitely will be thinking about it. I like to do it like as I'm going to sleep, I'll think about it. I couldn't go to, this is why I'm upset about today, but I couldn't go to something and have something on my mind and go to sleep not knowing what I'm going to wear for that. But if I was just day to day, I wouldn't be planning it. So what was planned for today? No, because you have to see it. <laughs> 
It was going to be chic. It was going to be all camel, some wide trousers, like a camel cashmere jumper. Not this. Oh, that sounds gorgeous. We can imagine it anyhow. <laughs> um, when you're unsure of a look, who do you trust for to give a, an opinion on what you're wearing? Would it be Jamie? No, it would be my best friend, Melissa, who does Wednesdays with me. And she's she's brutal. So she'll be like, mm, no, like she really, she rearranged. I had a different ring on my engagement finger, actually, just because, like, I don't know why. I was trying to stack it. And she was like, no, 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 that does not look chic. So she, I do ask her, and we have very similar style. Let's talk about travel. Do you pay particular attention to what you're wearing to travel in, your airport look? I, I don't like to go completely off the rails. I like to be comfy, but this would be something I would travel in. Same colour scheme, but comfy. Um, and wide trousers, floaty trousers always. Are you a good packer, bad packer? Terrible packer. I would never wear any of the clothes I bring, and I bring always colourful clothes. And then I end up just wearing the white, the cream. And so she the monotone I girl. Know. <laughs> I know. I don't know why I do it. <laughs> what luggage do you use? I use um, Romola. Lovely. Thank you. Lovely. Does that help organise you? No. No. But it looks she. <laughs> it's actually Jamie. So, I mean, I don't know. So, if you're going for longer than overnight, honestly, how many bags do you pack? Hmm. It depends. Probably just one big one and a little. But I have Jamie's, so I always shove half my stuff in his. As well? As well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, talking about travel, I, I know you're a keen skier, is that right? Yes. Um, what are your go-to ski wear brands? Goldberg's Lovely. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Okay, I love their stuff. Um, very expensive. And I've recently very kindly been um, given a wonderful jacket from My Sunday Ski. And it's green. Oh, my goodness. against the grain. I that know. really is going Lime against the green. Lime green puffer. But I'm feeling it. So I'm going to go for that. That sounds super cool. Talking about travel, have you ever had any sort of luggage disasters? Mm -hmm. Yep, our honeymoon, Jamie lost his luggage. Only on your honeymoon? I know, can you believe it? The, the, the whole journey from start to finish was disastrous. <laughs> we got delayed in, we flew to Amsterdam, we were delayed getting there, so we missed the connecting flight. They then put us on another flight, which then was delayed. They flew us back to UK. No. In the evening after 12 hours of being there, only to get a flight to summer I mean it was just disastrous and then we land and Jane my my luggage comes through and Jamie's didn't so we were stuck in Panama which was 46 percent humidity 46 degrees and he had just his tracksuit that he traveled in and your bikinis and my bikini <laughs> which did not look good on him <laughs> and we were on an island and there was no place to get clothes so he was stuck Nothing. No, there was nothing. No the hotel boutique. No. The staff gave them the staff the <laughs> uniform, so he was wearing the uniform. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, it was very entertaining for me, but I think he got quite fed up with it. That was oh. a real disaster. Oh my god. But I had my stuff. <laughs> do, you, do you have you ever sort of taken lessons out of that and sort of done what most sensible people I know is have a wheelie with the I fundamentals know. in it. I know, no, I still don't. Um, but everyone says also you should mix. If you're travelling with a partner, put half in half. So if one... Oh, I know, but it all gets a bit exhausting. And and does. then and then you've got all your shoes in one bag, and if you're me, and then it just is... It can be an equal disaster. Yeah, I need, to, I need lessons on packing, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you're off on the road next year. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be a situation. Oh. Wardrobe secret. What, if anything, do you feel you've got an excessive amount of in your wardrobe? Jeans. Particular brands? Levi. Oh, like kind of the vintage -y ones. I get some of them off um, vintage uh, shops, websites, and they all fit reasonably similar. They're all kind of high waisted, well, not too high waisted, just above the hip and not too baggy on the bum, but not tight on the legs. Straight, maybe less straight jeans. And are you. A one type of cut jeans girl, or do you have everything from skinnies to uber wide legs to cargos to... I have everything. 
I have everything, but I'm I'm not I don't wear skinnies that much. I've got a lot of um flared at the moment. <laughs> okay, so guilty secret. What mm-hmm. is the most expensive item of clothing that you've bought? I'm not asking for the price tag, but what is that item? Oh, it's, it, can I say my wedding dress? Yeah. I think it would be my wedding dress. But that's beautiful. Do you yeah. think do you see yourself ever wearing that again? No, but I don't see myself like changing it. You know how people yeah. cut it up and I want it to stay exactly how it is and maybe I don't think I'll fit into it. <laughs> oh, stop it. Stop. <laughs> but when you're buying not a wedding dress but mm-hmm. something that is expensive, do you ever justify it as pounds per wear? Coat and bags. Coat. Oh, my bags probably. I've got the bags, maybe the accessories. My bag or bags. <laughs> <laughs> One bag. Okay, guilty secret there. Are we allowed <laughs> to know what, what bag that was? Just the Chanel. Um, Just the Chanel. What, what is it? The, the famous one? I don't know what it's called. The 55? I think so. Oh, how lovely. That's what it is. But I think I justify that because that's an investment. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever buy, would you ever buy um, a piece like that from... Um, a, a second-hand website, a you know, totally. a vintage website or yeah. anything like that. I have some vintage bags actually, um, but I think it's called my vi- vi- um, vintage, but without the I. So start like that, and it's all vintage bags, and I've got some from there. And does that feel more sustainable? It does, and also they are a lot cheaper, and it's really cool to. They look cool yeah. because they're not around now. Yeah. Do you ever um, sell your clothes? I don't sell my clothes, but I give a lot of my stuff away to charity. But I think maybe it would be something that I should do is maybe sell it and then use that money and give that money to charity. I know a lot of people do that because there are a lot of things that... um, At the moment, I've had a culling recently and so there's not much that needs to go. But there definitely was, you know, back in the day, lots of fast. And that would go to charity? Yeah. And any particular charity that you like to support? I like to support my charity um, and then sort of just any women's charities. Mm. Mm. And any favourite vintage haunts? Do you buy your vintage online or do you, um, I mean, you live up in like, I, in I, West London, let's put it that yeah. way. Um, there's lots of vintage around there. Yes, there's one shop which I get lots of vintage sunglasses from. They're not very, just very bright all the time. Um, my, Lover's Lane, I think it's called. It's just the top of Portobello and it's got great stuff. But vintage stuff isn't, that sort of vintage stuff isn't that cheap. So I need to... No. no. And, but also with sunglasses, do you ever worry about the lenses not actually being mm. as good as they should be? And I think I find that. I definitely mm. don't think they are. I don't know if that is something maybe they wear. I think it was just, a, you know, the, the technology is right. very different now, yeah. you know, with some of these modern... Um, lenses are just incredible in terms of they don't scratch as much and the the UVA and the UVB protection is much much higher I yeah think. right let's move on to some quick fire questions mm-hmm. what fashion advice would you give your 20 year old self um don't try and follow everyone else and just wear what you really want to wear good which fashion trend would you l- most like to see make a comeback? Oh, gosh, this is hard. Ah. Um, oh, my God. There, I can't think of any. Don't worry. Skip. Okay. What fashion or beauty trend would you consign to Room 101? Um, uh, body concerts. <laughs> Your last impulse buy. My last impulse buy, oh, um, some ski cl- ski gloves that I do not need. <laughs> Views on tattoos. My husband's covered in them, so. And personal views in terms of your own? Not, not, I, I think they're really cool. It's always a debate on my mind, but I don't think I'll ever get one. Beauty treatment you couldn't give up? Beauty treatment I couldn't give up. Gua sha. What is gua sha? The, the, the little tool, the, the facial machine, like tool that you rub across your face and lymphatic drainage. Looking at your skin, I think it's time to buy one. Um, 
<laughs> high end or high street? High end. Bling or bare? Bling. Minimalism or maximalism? Minimalism. Couture or charity shop? Charity shop. Crocs, cute or puke? Puke. <laughs> Sneakers or stilettos? Sneakers. Skinnies, boyfriends or wide legs? Boyfriends. Bodycon or boho? Boho. Sports Lux or Rock Chick? Sports Lux. Experimental or, uni or uniform? Bit of both. Can I say that? You can say that. Cashmere or cotton? Cashmere. Shapewear or sexy lingerie? Shapewear. No, not your age, please. <laughs> and your body. I love Spanx. <laughs> <laughs> Tights or stockings or hold-ups? Tights. Bikini or one piece? Bikini. Beanie or berry? Beanie. And finally, at the end of the day, what do you or don't you wear in bed? I don't wear pyjama bottoms. Is that what you're <laughs> asking? <laughs> Can we revisit that? What do you or don't you wear? Oh, I do wear a big t-shirt. To sleep in. And a pants. <laughs> Sophie, what a blast. It's been great Thank you fun so much. chatting to you all things style related today. Thank you so much for having me. I've absolutely loved it. What fun. Thank you. Thank you.